Reed, and we'll be discussing investigations in this uh, presentation. Starting with introduction, as usual, the aim of investigations is to confirm and quantify a clinical diagnosis of dry eye. Although the symptoms in a given patient do not change, objective signs can fluctuate. The correlation between symptoms and tests is poor. However, the reliability of tests improves as the severity of dry eye increases. The tests measure the following parameters. Number one, stability of the tear film as related to its breakup time, which is abbreviated as BUT. Uh, tear production, uh, measured by Schirmer, fluorescent clearance, and uh, tear osmolarity test. Number three, ocular surface disease, which is uh, measured by corneal stains and impression cytology. Now, there is no clinical test that allows diagnosis of evaporative dry eye to be definitively com confirmed. It is therefore a presumptive uh, diagnosis based on the presence of associated clinical findings. It is suggested that tests are performed in the following order because the Schirmer strip can damage the ocular surface and cause staining. Tear film breakup time. The tear film breakup time is abnormal in aqueous tear deficiency and meibomian gland disorders. It is measured as, uh, first of all, fluorescent 2% or an impregnated uh, fluorescent strip moistened with non-preserved saline is instilled into the lower fornix. The patient is asked to blink several times. Then the tear film is examined at the slit lamp with a broad beam using the cobalt blue filter. After an interval, black spots or line appears uh, in the fluorescent stained film, indicating the formation of dry areas. Uh, the breakup time is the interval between the last blink and the appearance of the first randomly distributed dry spot. Uh, a breakup time of less than 10 seconds is suspicious. The development of dry spot always in the same location may indicate a local corneal surface abnormality, for example, epithelial basement membrane disease, rather than an intrinsic instability of the tear film. Uh, you can see the breakup time uh, disturbance here in this picture. Uh, you can see the, these black spots appearing. Now it uh, the abnormality depends on the time interval when these start appearing. Schirmer test is next in line. Uh, it is a useful assessment of aqueous tear production as opposed to aqueous tear deficiency. The test involves measuring the amount of wetting of a special number 41 Wattman filter paper, 5 mm wide and a 35 mm long. The test can be performed with or without topical anesthesia. In theory, when performed with an anesthetic, Schirmer 2, basic secretion is measured and without anesthetic, Schirmer 1, it measures maximum basic plus reflex secretions. In practice, however, Topical anesthesia cannot abolish all sensory and psychological stimuli for reflex secretions. The test is performed uh, as follows. Number one, excess tears are delicately dried. If topical anesthesia is applied, the excess should be removed from the inferior fornix with filter paper. The filter paper is folded five millimeters from one end and inserted at the junction of the middle and the outer third of the lower uh, uh, lid. Taking care not to touch the cornea or lashes, and as it is shown in the picture, uh, the patient is asked to keep the eyes gently closed. After five minutes, uh, the filter paper is removed and the amount of wetting from the fold is measured. Less than 10 millimeters of wetting after five minutes without anesthesia, or less than six millimeter with anesthesia, is considered abnormal. Uh, results can be variable and a single Schirmer test should not be used as a sole criterion for diagnosis of a dry eye, but repeatedly abnormal tests are highly supportive. Then comes
becomes ocular surface staining. The first one is fluorescent stain, uh, corneal and conjunctival epithelium where there is sufficient damage to allow the dye to enter the tissues as it is shown in the first figure. You can see punctate epithelial erosions here in the cobalt blue filter. Uh, uh, in the first picture there is mainly a uh, corneal uh, uh, staining then is the rose bengal uh, it is a dye that has an affinity for dead or devitalized epithelial cells that have a lost or altered mucus layer uh, corneal filaments or plaques uh, are also shown up more clearly by the dye and the use of a red free filter may help visualization a 1% solution of rose bengal or a moistened impregnated strip uh, can be used. The dye may cause intense stinging that can last for up to a day, particularly in patients with severe keratoconjunctivitis sicca. To minimize irritation, a very small drop should be used, immediately preceded by a drop of topical anesthesia and the excess washed out with saline. Uh, this picture here shows staining in the rose bengal. You can see the staining in the conjunctival area as well. This whole area uh, is stained, uh, indicating the uh, uh, conjunctival damage. Then is the lysamine green. Uh, it stains in a similar fashion to rose bangle, but causes less irritation and may uh, be preferred as it is seen in this picture. The staining pattern is shown here in the conjunctival area. Now the pattern of staining may aid diagnosis. As interpalpebral staining of the cornea and conjunctiva uh, is common in aqueous tear deficiency, superior conjunctival stain may indicate superior limbic keratoconjunctivitis. Inferior corneal and conjunctival stain is often present in patients with blepharitis or exposure. So in dry eye syndrome, lysamine green solution is preferable to rose bengal as it stains in a similar fashion but causes less irritation and also the pattern of staining is very, very important. Other investigations include uh, Although they are rarely performed in clinical practice, are fluorescent clearance test and tear function index. They may be assessed by placing a 5 microliter of fluorescent on the ocular surface and wearing the residual dye in a Shermer strip placed on the lower lateral lid margin at set intervals. Delayed clearance is observed in all dry eye states. Then comes uh, tear film osmolarity measurement techniques. They are available and are emerging as an accurate means of for diagnosis. The threshold value that distinguishes between the healthy eye and an eye with dry eye syndrome varies from 305 milliosmoles per liter and 316 milliosmoles per liter, depending on the degree of tear film instability. A widely accepted threshold is 308 milliosmoles per liter and a value of 316 milliosmoles per liter appears to discriminate between mild and moderate to severe dry eye. Tear osmolarity may not correlate with ocular symptoms, but it does correlate with effective treatment when evaluated in long term. Then tear constituent measurement, uh, tear samples can be is uh, assayed for the presence of markers known to be elevated, for example, matrix metalloproteinase 9 or decreased, for example, leptoferrin in dry eye. Um, phenol red thread test uses a thread impregnated with a pH sensitive dye. The end of the thread is placed over the lower lid and the length wetted the dye changes from yellow to red in tears uh, and is measured after 15 seconds the value of 6 millimeter is abnormal it is comparable to the Schirmer but takes less time to perform 
Tear meniscometry is a technique to quantify the height and thus the volume of the lower leg meniscus. Up in the end is the impression cytology that can determine the goblet cell numbers. So this is it, the investigations and cases of uh, Sjogren's syndrome. Uh, if you like the lecture, please press on the like button and subscribe to the channel. Thank you.